How's it going, everyone? So, beta 2 of iOS 26 is officially released, and we have it installed on our device. As we're going to go ahead and cover everything new that got added recently on this latest version of CarPlay for iOS 26. And of course, timestamps and everything will be in the description down below. Let's get started. Now, real quick, along with this update, we also receive updates on Watch OS 26, iPad OS, Mac OS, TV OS, Vision OS, HomePod OS, as they're all on beta 2 of 26 so here it is installed on our device and we got a couple of new updates and some interesting ones which is why i'm using a vehicle with an older display instead of a much modern one as some of these features you will soon see are basically giving older vehicles some nice updates now start off with number one and that is a new CarPlay screen. As this is the new splash screen that will actually shift whenever you transition from your iPhone to Apple CarPlay. It's been updated now, as well as the CarPlay icon is a little bit smaller now. So the first significant change that I really do like is notice we finally have the ability to pitch and zoom. Again, we are using a much older vehicle. I wasn't even sure this vehicle was going to support pinch and zoom. So now if we're just trying to quickly see what's going on in like traffic, notice how you can also do the rotation pivot as well. Forgot the exact name, but nonetheless, I could finally zoom in and then do this for a straight overview of the streets. Super convenient. However, if somebody from Apple is watching this, include this for whenever you have directions going. Because if we set directions, Unfortunately, I am still unable to do the zoom in and zoom out. I think that's where it's the most useful. I still have to rely on this old, older method, but it's a step in the right direction. Additionally, if we exit out of here, if there's an incident, your reports now support additional reports. So not only can you do speed check, crash, but if you look, oops, get exit that one. There's nothing there. If we scroll down, you can now do road closure, hazards, as well as roadworks. Well, those are the new changes I've found so far on Apple Maps. Feel free to comment down below if you see some more you'd like to share with everybody else. Moving along, Apple Music. So Apple Music now gives us this new menu icon next to the share play icon. Because above here, we have the ability to now finally enable or disable the auto mix functionality, which is different in Crossfade. With auto mix, it basically uses Apple intelligence to keep track on the music tone that's currently playing. And then it will match the next music tone, giving that the DJ effect. Really awesome, much better in Crossfade. It was basically fixed. This is, this works pretty well. And I want to say they actually improved it on beta too as well. But now you actually have this cue and you can also enable autoplay which means as soon as the queue is over it's going to continue suggesting more music based off your listening history so that's pretty cool right there now announce message also received a new update as well if you go into settings i'm not sure if this is a newly added feature but this is definitely something interesting if we go into settings real quick and we click on the announce message tab you have this new toggle for silent announcements or turn on announcements interesting how it's this toggle versus this toggle up here now previously in my other video i was struggling to get the uh, live activities to show up but if you look closely now we actually have live activities supported on this smaller screen so now if i go into like something like flight radar as an example yeah i'm gonna go track this commercial airline select follow nope it still doesn't work but i guess now we have three columns all because i enabled in the settings not only live activities need to be enabled, but in the Apple Intelligence and Siri, I enabled suggested in dashboards, and now it's able to give me a third column right there. Uh, still not sure exactly why live activities isn't working on my behalf, but right there I'll be able to track a flight. Uh, it's not working right now on my phone for some reason. Now, something I did miss can be located in the podcast app. In the podcast app, it was redesigned. But not only do we have like a similar layout, like how Apple Music looks like, but if you select a podcast, as an example, and you hit play, you have this new turtle and rabbit icon, which allows you to talk between insane speeds. I'm going to lower this real quick, but we could go all the way down to like point something, point five, or you could increase it all the way up to, it just sucks you have to spam on the screen just to increase it. Uh, they should give us a slider or a drop down menu. But you could speed it up to three times max. 
And if you go on your iPhone, you can also enable the enhanced dialogue. This way, whenever this voice is really fast, you can at least understand it a little bit better. But again, you also have the next play, which we previously had on this one. Nothing new there. It'll be interesting they integrated auto mix as well. But Apple Podcast app has been updated on Apple CarPlay as well. And then I'm not sure if I covered this, but the phone app, sorry if this is all blurry, but you can now quickly go into your, listen to your voicemails directly from CarPlay. But aside from that, that's basically it. The next massive improvement can be located on your iPhone. But real quick before I talk about that one, uh, no new wallpapers, unfortunately, and nor did Apple added the ones that it removed in the past. It looked like these wallpapers that we see right here are the ones that we're stuck with until the official release, because this is the exact same thing what happened in the previous beta. A lot of people were believing that Apple is going to add those later on once it became compatible. Well, the official version of iOS 18 was released and we never received those removed wallpapers. So something tells me they're not going to do the same thing here. But on your iPhone, something cool that did get added. If you go into your iPhone settings and you scroll down to sound and heptics, if you select ringtone, if you select reflection, we have alt one. Which looks, sounds like that. So we got a newly added ringtone, which is not bad, actually. And it sounds really great when you have it on CarPlay, as you just heard. Because this is the one we're familiar with. And this is Alt-1. Sounds like a good remix. So that was a surprise update, which is now available to download. Public beta will be released on July and it will become officially released for everybody else sometime during the fall. Now the compatible devices are listed right there. It looks like Apple did drop the, the 10s as well as the 10s Max. Unfortunately, that's no longer supported. Now, if you have an iPhone 11 or newer, you will be receiving iOS 26. And then when you get incoming calls, this is how the new UI looks like for those incoming calls, and you can decide to accept or deny. So that's been updated. This is definitely a nice update of CarPlay. It's not the Apple CarPlay Ultra that's available on selected vehicles. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything new that was recently added on CarPlay, as well as that little bonus at the end that I just had to share with you guys. Make sure you stay tuned because I do plan on covering more Beta 2 updates in a couple hours after this video's release, which should be up by the time hopefully you're watching this video and they'll be right there. If not, I have something else in the meantime. But if you missed my previous CarPlay video where I cover everything A to Z, I have it listed underneath that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.